Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming along to this session of uh, how to learn how to use the reports within learning journals. Um, some of you might have just been on the other session we had a, a little while ago on the basics. Uh, so welcome back to all of you guys. Uh, but for those of you who are not, my name is David. Um, I created the system a couple of years ago. Uh, what we're going to do is hopefully it's only going to take us about don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, if that, maybe not even as long as that. Um, at somewhere on your screen, you should have a little chat window where you can fire messages into me. Um, and if you want to send me a message at any time, please do so and I will um, respond to you. Um, I'm recording this session, so I'll put it up on our website and I'll email it out to everybody at the end uh, or later on today, sorry, as well. Um, so if anyone's got any sound problems, don't worry, that will all be fixed out when I email the link out to you to be able to watch this. Um, so I'm just going to um, share my screen with you just now um, so that you can see what I'm doing. <coughs> so here you can see uh, we've got our typical private nursery set up here in my test account. Now we're talking about reports today. Hopefully you're all familiar with the basics. Um, so let's say that we've got a report that we want to um, set up for a child. The way we do that, we go to our configuration tab up here. And there's a little reporting section down here as well. So we go down and we click on reports, just like this. Now, this will show you the reports that you've got set up already. And what it's designed to do is enable you to either create ad hoc reports with your own content and, and formats, or you can upload Word documents. So maybe something that's provided by your local authority um, that they require you to complete periodically. Um, so this is where you use this section here. So you see we've got absolutely none set up here at all. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a new report. So we click on this add new report button. I'm going to go through each of the report types just now. I'm going to start off with um, your ad hoc reports. And we call that a dynamic report because it's a report that you make up yourself. Um, you decide on what the content is. Decide on your report title. So I'm going to just make up as our example our termly summary. <coughs> as I said, we're going to use this as a dynamic report. We'll come back to what the upload reports are in a second once we've done this one. You can choose how many times per term this report has to be completed or how many times per room this has to be completed. I would just suggest you always leave this as a no limit so that makes it more flexible for you. Generally, you'll just not be touching these drop downs here. You then choose whether the report is active or not, and we'll, we'll see that it is active. So I've actually created our report now. Now, as a dynamic report, we can change the content of this. Now, the button here is maybe a little bit misleading in its labeling. It says question, but what this really is, is the, um, the, the heading content of your report. So if I click on this questions here, we're asked to put in the heading or the question. Now, I'm just gonna do a very basic report here, and I'm gonna base it around uh, our local curriculum. So I'm gonna have a heading on literacy. We're gonna have a heading on numeracy. And also one on health and well-being. Now you can have whatever you want in here. You can have as many of these as you want, and I'll show you what this does. Uh, but really, what we want to do is we're creating these so that we so that the practitioner can then talk around these for the the child. I'm just going to do these three at the moment for the purposes of this content, that this this demonstration. We then want to go to our reporting setup. Because what you can do is you can actually decide to which rooms and which terms this report will apply. So we choose which report we want to set up, which is our termly summary. Now at the moment, this report is available to all terms and there is no limit. So depending on how your nursery is set up, you might have several terms throughout the year. But you may only want this to um, this report to be completed and to appear in the last term of the year, for example. So you might choose your summer term. Uh, you might want it to be uh, in every term, but you only want it to be completed twice a year. And that's where you can 
make these changes using these drop downs here. If you want to, you can say you only want it to appear in a specific room. So I only want this report available to the preschool children, for example. And actually, I'm just going to choose that here. So at the moment, our report, our termly summary report is available to all children in the preschool room all times of the year. And that's our report created. Now we can go and check that. We can go into our preschool room. We can go into any one of our children, and I'll choose Amy as I always do. And to get to our reports, click on the edit button for this child. Then on the reports tab for this child. And here we can see in our current term, which is 2016, we've got termly summary available to be completed. We can see that there's no limit to how many times we can do this, and we can see that it's not yet been completed as well. Now, the idea behind this is that um, when you come to complete this report, you would then click on this complete button here. Uh, I've got one report here of sound issues. Um, I think that may be a local issue to you, I'm afraid. Um, what I would suggest if you're struggling, then I, I will be sending out a recording of this uh, to everybody that's applied or to everyone that's, that's here later on today. So we've ticked on our complete box here and that brings up our report. You can see we've got our termly summary report here. And then we've got boxes that the practitioner can now write about in here. So for example, I've just got a little bit here that I'm going to put into the numeracy one. So Amy's working well on numbers, blah, blah, blah. So you would write your report for here. You can maybe even put in a next step if you want to. And the parents would then be able to see that. Because what you can do is you can use this checkbox down the bottom here. Can the ch child's parents view this report? If you check that box, then yes. When the parent logs in, they'll actually be able to see this. And that's very handy for, um, you know, getting information out ahead of things like parent consultations. Those 10 minute consultations that they get, uh, it's always best to give them as much information ahead of time as possible. If they have something like this report, then they'll have that and they'll be able to come prepared with questions and they'll know the gist of what's going to be talked about. We then click on the save report button here and it saves our report. So um, you'll see that just in a second, our report's gonna generate, there we go. So we can see that we've got a completed report. It's um, this P uh, denotes that the parents are able to view it and uh, we can view it or edit the report. So if I view this report now, obviously there's not gonna be very much in here. There we go, we've got Amy Smith's term and summary. We've got her three sections and we've got what I put in just here. Very, very simple to set up, very easy, but it might take you a couple of times just going through that process of going to your configuration tab, going to the reports menu item, then adding your report, titling it and choosing it and going through that process. Do it a couple of times, very, very simple, but once you've done it once, that report is there for everybody to be used and you can complete that as many times as you want. Obviously these PDFs that are completed, you can print these out, you can save them, you can email them to parents, whatever it is you want to do with them. Okay, so that's our dynamic reports there. The other type of report we have is what we call an upload report. So I'm going to create another report here and this time I'm going to call it our two year progress check. Because I know that Certainly in England, this is a very uh, important document and your local authority may provide you with a template that they want you to use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this is an upload report and we call it upload because we're going to upload the template for this report. We choose our file and I've actually already got one here. And what I'll do is I will open this up just so you can see what this report actually looks like. So here's a UIFS progress check at age two, and this was uh, Northamptonshire Council, I believe. Make that a bit bigger for you. So what you would do, this is the report that's been supplied. So we're going to upload this to our system and make it available for all the children that we need to. 
So I've uploaded our two year progress check. Again, keep these drop downs as they are. You can change them if you want to, but there's really no need. And then we choose this active box and click on the submit button. Before we can complete this report though, we do need to remember to set it up and assign it to the rooms that we want to. So we set up our report. We're gonna choose our two year progress check. And we're gonna say that well, at the moment it's available to all terms and all children, and we want that to be the same. So we want all terms and all children in all rooms to be able to access this report. And that's the way that it is at the moment. Um, so we can now check that by again, going back to our room here, going to Amy, edit Amy, look at her reports, And we can now see that two year progress check has appeared here as well. <coughs> now the difference we've got here is that when we complete this report, it's going to ask us if we want to download the template or if we want to upload the file straight away. So if we download the template, you can see down here, we just downloaded our two year progress check template. And when we open that up, We've got that here, and now what we can do is we can complete this uh, test nursery, etc., etc. So we've completed our two-year progress check. We save this, and then we upload that file back into Amy's profile. So here we've got our two year progress check that we've just completed and saved. Again, you can choose whether you want the child's parents to upload or not. We'll leave it not this time so that you can see the difference. So that's just now uploading that report. And in just a couple of seconds, it's going to refresh the page. There we go. We can see that we've completed this report now. And um, that was done today by me. The parents can't view it this time. So now what we do, if we want to view this, we would click on view. It's just downloaded Amy Smith's two year progress report. We open that up and well, you can see it's just the one that I just did there. You can do that with any number of reports. There's no limit to what you can upload. There's no um, limit to the number of reports that you add. There's no limit to the number of uh, edits that you make to a report as well. Um, Hopefully that has been useful in those two reports there. Really, there's nothing much more to it than that. And I would encourage you maybe to set up a couple of test reports. Try it out for yourself. Get your staff to try it out and, and fill out some anymore. If anyone has any questions, we'll just take a couple of more minutes to go, to go through them. But at the moment, uh, we don't have anything there. If anyone is not yet using our system, you can go to our website, which is learningjournals.co.uk and get yourself a free trial. Click on the free trial up the top and complete this form and um, that will allow me to create your account. Um, we're always very, very happy to hear any suggestions that anyone has got that will help make the system easier for you to use. So features and things that you would like to see in the system that will make it easier for you, please do let me know about those um, because we're very, very flexible and can get these built in. Well, if that will be all, guys, thank you very much for, for coming along for this very short webinar. Um, hopefully you've seen it's quite simple to be able to, to use reports within the system. If you do have any questions after this, then please do get in touch. My, my name is David. You can contact me, info at learningjournals.co.uk. And hopefully we'll see you again very soon for another Learning Journals webinar.